Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, the moment Sir Jerry announced that I'll be the one to represent the elementary department in this part of our Congress. To be very honest, I was really nervous, but at the same time excited. Nervous in the sense that this is my first time to meet almost all of you in person. So that makes me really nervous. But excited because they say that teachers as we are, we must be ready all the time. We must be prepared. And come on, how can you refuse a request coming from a public schools district supervisor? Isn't it so there? By the way, I am David Calvadores and Taana. Welcome to the talk. Every time I am assigned to begin a group report in our doctoral classes, especially in the subjects of Mamblamela, I usually do it by sharing a short story, which is somehow related to the topic to be presented. And today, again, I'm doing that. I will be sharing with you a short story and I hope that you will listen attentively and reflect on the message of the story. So here we go. There was this village and there lived a young boy with his parent, specifically his mother. That young boy was really fond or had a habit of eating a lot of sugar. Of course, his mother was really worried about his son and she kept on reminding his son to, to stop that habit because we all know that it's not good for his health. But the young boy, her son, didn't listen to her. So the, the only option that she had was to bring him to the wise man. So we have this third character, the wise man. So they journeyed a long time to reach the place of the wise man. They experienced hot weather conditions and other rough experiences. When they reached the place of the wise man, the mother immediately informed the wise man of the situation and then asked him to give advice to, to her son on what to do as they, they both know that eating sugar or eating a lot of sugar is not really good for his health. The wise man answered and he said, Mother, I cannot talk to your son right now, but you can bring him back to me after a month. So what do you think will uh, the mother feel? Of course, she was confused and at the same time upset. But with nothing to do, they went back home and then after a month, they went back to the wise man. And then when they reached the, ma the wise man's place for the second time around, the wise man told immediately the young boy and he said, You know, young boy, you should stop eating sugar because that is not good for your health. You should listen to your mother and obey her. Eventually, the boy agreed to the wise man. And then again, the mother was again confused. And she asked the wise man, Why didn't you tell him what to do the last time we came here? The wise man answered, Mother, the last time you came, I had a habit of eating a lot of sugar myself. So I believe that the message, the story is trying to convey is very clear to us. Actually, there are sayings, popular lines saying, we cannot give what we don't have. Action speaks louder than words. We should preach what we teach. Uh, walk your talk and many more. Um, with God's grace, with the kind of quality of education that the message Scott is trying to offer to us, and of course, our efforts to finish our postgraduate studies, I strongly believe that we are heading towards becoming effective leaders in the near future. Amen. Now, the question is, when we become leaders, what attributes are you looking for in, our, in your future followers? Maybe you are looking for uh, future subordinates who are engaged, not that engaged who are getting married, but people who are engaged, empowered. Maybe you're looking for someone or some people who are flexible, open to change, with good attitude, with good work ethic. 
What a list. That's a very good list. But as leaders, do we really know what these mean as we work each day? Do we really know what it takes to be engaged, to be empowered, to be open to change? Because if our answer is not clear, then definitely we cannot lead by example. Why? Simply because we don't know what the example is supposed to be. You know, ladies and gentlemen, it's very easy for us to just tell our, our followers all the correct words that we can tell them and expect that these words will have a major impact to them and they will follow us. That's very easy, but that's unrealistic. Yes, our words are powerful, but our actions are far more powerful. And take note, some people are more interested in our feet than our lips. Now, the next question would be, how do we lead by example? Now, I have some ways on how to do that. First is, we can develop that sense of shared ownership. When we feel that we are one of the owners of an institution, we, can, we, we will also feel that we have something to share for its improvement. Next, we can be proactive. Proactive in the sense that we can ask on what we can do to improve a situation. A, a great example of being proactive is when we do our exams, a proactive person will review weeks before the examination. A reactive person will review an hour before the examination. Next, we can also be accountable. When we feel accountable, we feel that we have something in us that we can contribute to the organization. Lastly, let's try things in the service of our desired goal. And when we make mistakes, it's okay, don't worry. When we make mistakes, own them. But don't forget to learn from them. Now going back to our story, our story of the young boy, the wise man and the mother of the young boy, the message simply tells us that if we want people to listen and follow us, we must lead as an example on things that we want others to follow. In doing so, we are also creating confidence in people in us. Again, I am David Galpadores and Diana. This is Tito. Good afternoon, everybody.